Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O light from light, true God from true God, on this day make us worthy to meditate on the miracle when you open the eyes of the blind man on the road to Jericho. In your compassion open our eyes so that we may know you and follow you. With the children of light, we praise and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Holy Trinity, the one true God, to the Father, the eternal light, the Son, who is light from light, and the Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and from the Son. One power, one authority, and one exalted God, to the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Only begotten word of God, born in time of the Virgin Mary, you are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end you chose to open the eyes of the blind to teach us that you are the source and the giver of all light. By your miracles you prove that you are the awaited Messiah of whom Isaiah spoke. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. O Lord, who has given us light, accept our witness and our profession of faith that you are the truly the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Now we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to let the light of your knowledge shine within our hearts. May we see your face and rejoice, as did Bartimai on the road to Jericho, and may your light shine throughout the world, so that all may see your face and rejoice in you. We raise glory to you, to your Father who sent you, and to the Holy Spirit, the source of all holiness, now and forever.
O Christ, you are the true light who guides all people. You shine the splendor of your radiant light on the eyes of the blind. Through your grace, open our minds and consciences to the light of your holy gospel. Accept the fragrance of our incense and our repentance, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Kaddishat Aloho Kaddishat Chayalotono Kaddishat Lamoyuto from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, now I myself, Paul, urge you through the gentleness and clemency of Christ I who am humble when face to face with you, but brave towards you when absent. I beg you that, when present, I may not have to be brave with that confidence, with which I intend to act boldly against some who consider us acting according to the flesh. Or, although we are in the flesh, we do not battle according to the flesh, for the weapons of our battle are not of flesh, but are enormously powerful. Capable of destroying fortresses, we destroy arguments and every pretension raising itself against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. And we are ready to punish every disobedience once your obedience is complete. Look at what confronts you. Whoever is confident of belonging to Christ should consider that he belongs to Christ. So do we. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. 
came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see. the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity, we burn this incense. Kyrie Eriksson. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. We may silent to listen to the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks. The word of the living God. The evangelist Mark writes, they came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimai, the son of Timai, a blind man, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and to shout, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be quiet. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus stopped, and he said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, he's calling you. He threw aside his cloak and he sprang up and he came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you wish me to do for you? And the blind man replied to him, Rabboni, that I may see. And Jesus said, told him, go on your way. Your faith has saved you. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed him on the way. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. And they came to Jericho. What do you wish me to do for you, Rabboni, that I may see? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the year 364, in the valley that runs through the Lebanon range of mountains, known as Becca, in the city of Baalbek, Baalbek, there was in 365 when St. Marian himself was just probably a boy in northern Syria. This is taking place in the south. There was a man who was racked over a, probably a large stone, pulled over some kind of protrusion, a sawhorse, something along those ways, was pulled over so that he was bent over this object. 
And then the executioners who were there opened up his belly and pulled out his intestines as a way of killing him in execution. This man's name is known as Cyril, and we commemorate him today on the 29th of March, Cyril of Baalbek. Cyril of Baalbek in 365 had been um, condemned by Julian the Apostate. Julian the, the, the Emperor was a great nephew to Constantine. And of course, with Constantine, 50 years before this moment, Christianity had been made legal. Now, if you go to Baalbek today, not only is it the center of Hezbollah, but Baalbek has these magnificent Roman ruins, these antiquities that are there, still extremely impressive. And dating back thousands of years with the worship of Baal, Baal just means master, Lord. That's the God of the Canaanites. In this area, you had temples dedicated to Baal, and then when the Romans came, it became an enormous religious complex for the Romans. But Christianity had been legalized five decades before this moment. And what had happened is during that time, this, the majority of the people in this area were Christian anyway by this point in the middle of the fourth century. And what Cyril had been doing was dismantling the temples, taking the idols down. And so Julian, who had been baptized as a baby, repudiates his faith at about the age of 18. Sound familiar? And when he became emperor at the age of 30, then he publicly proclaimed the fact that Christianity was absurd. And in his intent, in his mind as the emperor now, he's going to restore Rome to its glory and its honor to the gods that created the empire. So he repudiates the religion of his uncle and he sets about to restore paganism. But paganism, as he understood it, meaning having been educated as a Christian in the palace. So what he's actually trying to reconstitute wasn't really paganism anyways, it was some kind of a gospel-influenced form of idolatry. But in any case, at this point in the 360s, that the war is constantly going on between Rome and Persia, in this area, Julian came through, and when he found out that this man had been pulling down the idols, dismantling these temples. He was enraged and condemned him to death. Saint Erasmus died this way also for the Romans further west, to be disemboweled, to be pulled back and have your belly cut open so all your intestines just simply fly out and you die from this very horrible way of death. But Saint, Be Saint Cyril reminds us of the, of the problem of idols. The word idol only means an image, an image of how we perceive something. It's not about Baal or Astarte or Jupiter or Hermes or any of the names of these gods. It's about creating images which are false about a reality. So it winds up being very beautiful this, this year that it coincides with the gospel of the blind man. Because if you look through our prayers, the morning prayers, the night prayers, the prayers during the, the, the Mass, they are about sight. We come to the end, we're coming towards the end of Lent, of course. And at this point, after moving through for six weeks, five weeks already, the idea is, Lord, and in fact, in the Syriac, as you see it in, the, in our gospel today, in the bulletin translation, Rabboni, my teacher, Rabbi just means teacher, literally my teacher. Rabboni means our teacher. Grant me light, allow me to see. This is really the whole purpose of Lent, is the ability to see better than I saw 12 months ago, to see more clearly. And even if I only see just a smidge more, better, than I saw last year, then this Lent has been successful. That is conversion, continually turning towards our Lord. And Jericho? Jericho, in the relative time of our Lord, Jericho was Palm Beach. Jericho was Tampa. Jericho was Miami. Jericho, for those who come from Massachusetts, your camp is in Belgrade or some other place. This is where you win. Jericho is where you went when you had money. 
So Jericho in the gospel always is an epitome and the exemplar of worldliness. And that's why it's not by accident this blind man is just sitting outside the city begging. That's he's been reduced to because of his blindness. Now when we talk about idols in St. Cyril of Balabek, an idol is an image that we wind up portraying to something which is false. And of course, when we speak of it in a religious context, the idol is the false image of trying to portray the divine reality. It's trying to put the divinity into a box. I understand God. God doesn't work this way. God doesn't work that way. God should work this way. And of course, when we have images and idols that create in our world, that we've created, we're always shocked when God works in a different way. Whether it's in my life personally, or as we witness now in these last weeks of sometimes relative hysteria in the planet. And as I mentioned to you last week, this is an amazing coup on the part of God that he's gotten for the probably the first time in the history of the Christian church for 2,000 years. The whole planet is doing Lent. The whole planet is giving up. The whole planet is thinking about its fragility. The whole planet is thinking about the proximity of death. Not because it's being morbid, but because it has to understand that we are fragile creatures. But of course, the reason why we're so shocked by all of this is because it's pointing out to us our human insufficiencies. Who wants that? We're forced back into our houses, dealing with our family members, dealing with our spouses. When we deal with other people, other people necessarily manifest my insufficiencies. That I'm not as wonderful and as exuberant and as kind that I thought that I was. Because other people tell me in the household that I'm not. And that's not a bad thing. Curled up in the corner reading your favorite pious book with everybody gone, of course we're all saints. But when it comes to the point that we're on top of each other, and that's one of the statistics that they don't tell you about, but the BBC covered at one moment, that once they started unlocking Wuhan, the divorce rate tripled. So apparently people in Wuhan went from their apartments down to City Hall to file for divorce. That tells you a lot what was going on for being locked in your apartment for six weeks. That insufficiency is very important for us to understand. That fragility is a gift. That when we understand the insufficiencies and the quirks in life, they prove that this world is not where we are meant to be forever. This is not what we were created for. We are only in movement. And what Cyril was doing by dismantling these temples and taking down these false idols, these false images of the divine, was doing nothing than saying, stop your illusion and come to learn what the true light of divinity is. And so when we look at all of this, if you think about three months ago, what were we doing? We're arguing about Democratic candidates, who cares really in the long picture of things? But every single day, the news broadcast was constantly on primaries, 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 primaries. It reminded me of 9-11, which I was in Washington DC that day when everything was blowing up. But I remember there was a broadcaster the next day, or there was a newspaper article, in fact, it wasn't on the radio, it was a newspaper article. And it was in the sports page. And if we think back as the 1990s, all right, this sports reporter only wrote, he wrote about 9-11, of course, the following day. And he wrote something that was very perceptive by saying, isn't it that we've learned something when we consider the whole previous year of 2000? I mean, after we went through the hysteria of Y2K, of course. The human beings, we are so inclined to hysteria, it's unbelievable, but because we don't see we become fearful, anxious, we run in all circles like chickens with their heads cut off because we don't see the true eternal light which governs everything, including these unseen viruses. Everything is under God's control. And Cyril pulling down these idols, his Baal is not going to save you. The true light, which is the origin of all existence, you will find health and well-being. 
And so in pointing out, when he, he pointed out in his article by saying, last week, the biggest news story in 2001, as far as a sports reporter was concerned, was whether or not Michael Jordan was going to come back to basketball. And he says, really? This is, that was our main concern five days ago? Because nothing else was happening. I mean, after we, again, we got through 2000. And when you think about how the fragility of human life, not only were we arguing about primaries, we're talking about how we were going to conquer Mars. We're going to all go to Mars and everyone's shooting off rockets. It will be interesting to see the statistics on global pollution that will be at the end of, say, six months of this. It is said that the fish are returning to the canals of Venice. This idea that points out to us our insufficiencies and our frailty winds up shattering. Our retirement funds don't look as good as they did three weeks ago, do they? All of these things that we rely on, all these things that we think we're so good at, God is just shattered by his providence. And that is a beautiful lens. It is the fulfillment of that desire, Lord, that I may see, that I may see my life. I know I'm a beggar. I sit outside this wall of Jericho every day. I know that I'm in need. So Bartitima is actually well advanced over most of the human race in making that declaration because he knew that he was weak. He knew that he was fragile. He knew that his life was in dependence upon others. There is an excellent interview done with Rabbi Sachs in England recently. And he talks about this fact. We, a year ago at this time, there's people who would claim that texting people is the same as meeting up with them. That somehow sending a text is keeping in contact with people. And now we realize when you're locked in your apartment that you text whoever you want. I get all kinds of emails these days because everyone's bored. I'm spending all my time just typing and answering emails, which is fine, but apparently nothing else to do. Let's talk to the priest. But what they do, and I was never under this illusion, that texting is not the same thing as seeing people. But a month ago, how many people of a younger generation, that's the same thing. And now you realize when you text, it's not the same thing. When you can't see people and you can't talk to them and you can't touch someone. And Rabbi Sachs says, if, if only one thing we come out of this is that we learn how much we need one another as the human beings, then that will have been a great gift. And that texting people is not the same thing. Emailing someone is not the same way. Or whatever umpteen number of apps there are to communicate, they're not the same thing. And this is the idea behind this request, Rabboni, Lord, that I may see. Notice the term is teacher, that I may see. It's not Lord in the sense of my sovereign and the one who guides me. It's my teacher. Lent is about learning. Lent is, about not, Lent is not about giving up things. Lent is about learning and entering into the light. And St. Augustine, when he comments on the episodes of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, at our Lord passing through and staying in their home, he reminds us, the people that he's preaching in his sermon, he says that we are, we're only travelers here. We're on a journey. This is not where we're meant to be established. We have no fixed abode. And so these are very important aspects. And it is also very funny. Now, I mentioned this last week in passing. But the notion of humor. Human beings, we have a sense of humor. It's called risibility, philosophically. We have the ability to laugh because we are intelligent beings. We can see the incongruity of things around us. It's why everybody loves Bugs Bunny. It's why everyone loves Wile E. Coyote and the, the Roadrunner. There's nothing actually funny 
in the Roadrunner cartoons. What's funny about being crushed by a boulder? What's funny about being run over by a Mack truck? What's funny about being run over by a train? None of it. But everyone laughs when they watch these comics, these films, these film strips, because of the incongruity of the whole thing. Why do we find it amusing that you have two people chasing each other around nonstop? Every single episode is exactly the same. One chasing the other and one getting smashed, blown up, run over, destroyed by something, and we laugh. It doesn't matter whether you're six or 106, you still laugh. You see different things. The cartoons that you once laughed at as a child, you now laugh at because now you realize the coyote will hold up signs that say things that you're not reading at six, but what to an adult becomes all the more hilarious. And in this whole event, when we're talking about conquering Mars and going, to the, going back to the moon and all of these things, even though we can't feed our own poor and our homeless here on planet Earth, there is an incongruity that the whole thing comes shattering down, screeching to a halt because of something which isn't even living. A virus is not a bacteria. A virus is something which will multiply in its host, but left alone it just decomposes. It's not, it doesn't live, it doesn't reproduce in that sense, it multiplies. And this is in the incongruity of the whole thing in the 21st century in which we think we are so brilliant and all of our ancestors were stupid. It's hilarious that it all comes screeching to a halt and it all comes slamming down. And our solution in the modern world in the 21st century, is it to ask for light and to see and to learn? No, it's to buy toilet paper and bullets now this is nuts. None of this is rational. And that's why looking at it, you say this is incongruous. And that's why it is funny. The opposite of funny is not being serious. The opposite of funny is just not funny. You can be totally serious and have an excellent laugh. And that is what God has really been giving to us by his providence over these weeks. And so, yes, we're serious about this. Yes, wash your hands. Yes, stay safe. But at the same time, have a good laugh that the entire planet has come screeching to a halt in March of 2020. As St. Augustine says, we are on our way. We are not yet in our native land. And so that in the smashing of idols, it's not that the idols of who God is, of how he works, of what he does by his providence, of how God acts, of this thing that we call heaven. And as I told you, I read the obituaries all the time in Maine because actually they're very sadly funny also. Everyone just seems to disappear. Per her request, no service, no nothing, no visitation. Oh, but we're all going to have a party in July at the lake. We'll call it a celebration of life, but it'll be a party. It's, this is not the way you usher the dead out of this world. This is extremely tragic. It's also tragic because in just a 20-year minute period, 20 year period, if you remember well, 20 years ago, at least after 9-11, for about two months, the church is kind of filled and then they disappeared again. But at least there was a reaction of turning towards God in 20 years ago that's not happening now and what's becoming another generation later. And these things are showing us the darkness and the illusion under which we live as human beings. And this is tragic. And that's why we, who have embraced the gospel, and God bless you, you know, like I said, we will always have the ceremonies, you have the schedules that are down. I can't imagine locking the doors to you. But in that, we continue to go deeper into our understanding, to ask for light, so that we understand when St. Augustine says to us, because we are not in our fixed abode, because we are only in movement, because we are moving towards something, as I've told you, that's the meaning of the word parish itself, travelers. This is a group of travelers. They're not here for long. But when St. Augustine says that to those who have received the light of the gospel, they understand it. It makes sense. Of course we're in movement. And that's why, to finish with, St. Augustine says, we are in a state of longing. 
The people who are trapped in Florida, because there's Mainers who are down there that I know who are there, who can't come back now. And they wrote back and they said, well, you may think that sounds wonderful to be locked down on you know, the, the west coast of Florida. But they said, we're not anywhere near our families and our grandchildren. So it's horrible. It doesn't matter if we have oranges and the sun is shining. And that is a very wise statement. This is not where I belong. This is not my homeland. I was made for something much greater. And when I create an idol of what I call heaven or what I call religion or what I call God, and they're false, then I live in darkness, no matter what I call the things. And so the reality that's here when St. Augustine talks about this state of longing and of movement, when we appreciate that truth, we are very much in the light and the illumination of our teacher. We are very much in that light. And that's why St. Augustine finishes by saying, because we're in a state of longing and not in our fixed abode, it is why we are not in full enjoyment. And joy will always be broken and short and timed, whatever happens. But that's not a surprise to us nor do we run in hysteria trying to cling on to things to make us happy because we know even in those happiest of moments, it's going to end. No matter what it is on the face of the earth, it will always end because we were not created for here below. And that's why what I leave you with as I've talked about the ceremonies, on Thursday evening of the great mysteries during Holy Week, during Great Week, during Passion Week, we have the ceremonies and normally we have the washing of the feet of the 12 apostles and everything during the gospel. That part obviously we won't do, but we will still have a mass that night commemorating what it is actually specifically about that service. It's not about washing feet, it's about the Eucharist. And this year we will have that being the only focus on the divine mysteries. Our Lord's death and resurrection allowed to be present, truly, really, substantially present under the divine mysteries for us. And normally there's a procession and we take it off to the side altar into the St. Jude Chapel. And there normally people would remain for the hours after in thanksgiving, praying before our Lord silently during those hours in gratitude to the institution of the Eucharist. That part also this year we won't do, though I have to say you weren't ever really doing that anyways on Thursday evening. That's something we have to restore. But on the Friday, and that's what I leave you with, on Friday at noon, 11.30 I think in your bulletins, there is a ceremony called the signing of the chalice. And the signing of the chalice is our most ancient liturgy, it's called Sharar. It is the oldest text that we have in the Syriac tradition. And it is used for what we used to call the Mass of the Presanctified on Good Friday, the day of our Lord's death. In the evening, of course, we do his death and burial. But in the day around noon is when we do the signing of the chalice and that Eucharist instituted the night before would be brought back in a procession back to the altar for the ceremony. And since we're all locked in our homes now, and you know you won't find the door locked at 11.30 on Good Friday, I encourage you, because most people, they all come to the evening for the death and burial of our Lord, and that's beautiful. But the true liturgical act that day is the signing of the chalice. And so maybe God in his providence in shattering all of our images, our illusions, and our idols has allowed for many people this year to see for the first time in their lives and to read the beautiful prayers of the signing of the chalice. So I encourage you on Good Friday. You have to come back in the evening for the death and burial of our Lord, of course. There's two ceremonies on the day. But it would be entrance into that light of which the beggar, Bartimai, asked of our Lord, that I may see. And when we've done that, then not only are we not in danger of death, but we have been very much, as our Lord says to Bartimai, go, go your way, go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. Not only in the midst of all of it will we yet not have, we have entered the light, but we will also have find that wholeness and restoration and health and well-being. So may on this day, our prayer be to the great teacher and master of all, Rabboni, that I may see truly.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We will continue with the creed on page 748, 748. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light. True God, from true God, be God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory of the Lord. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hardcore to show. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts. Grant them life and your kingdom. 
as we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary and Saint Jude, and Saint Cyril of Balabeth. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the repose of Edwin Lambs and for the intentions of the Catholic Extension Society and all of its donors. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss, that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may be your radiant and blameless flaw. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, o holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Peace, peace love, love, and, and faith, faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we bow before you and ask that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Holy God and Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through your grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and 
the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and true. Truly glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God, the Father, maker of all creation. With your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit, the angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim. the Father Almighty, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, when we had strayed from you by transgressing your law, you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By his saving passion he restored us to our original inheritance, and he gave us life by his divine blood. Wabiyama haraktum hashoni lema bid khaye, and sabe lahma mina koni shanto, o parahu kadech. Waksu ya bil talmi dao karo mara, sabe khulam mehne kul khono deni tao. Fahro diela, dahlo fai kun wahlab sagiye, me takaseu me tihem. Husoyon hame wa hoye dal alam alamin. Anno alko so damsi ho men hamro ho men mayo bar ho kadesh ya bil talmi dao karo mar sab ishtaw mene kul ho ho no deni tao demo ho dilan diati ki khadato. Dahlo fai kun wahlav sagiye, me te shadu me ti hem. Khusoyon khawme wa khoy, dan qalam alamin. Whenever you observe these commandments, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth and baptism, your saving passion, and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion on us and have mercy on us in your kindness and forgive our sins in your mercy. For this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. 
Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit to send and rest upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Murio, Anin Murio, Anin Murio, Nite Mor Rojo Chayu Kadisho, Unachen Alainu Al Korbo No Hono. Since he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the pardon of faults, the honor, upbuilding, and strengthening of your holy church, and the protection of her children from all sin. And may these holy mysteries allow us to stand with confidence before your awesome throne, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, exalt your holy church established throughout the world. Protect her shepherds of the true faith in peace and security, all the days of their lives, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name, bless those who are near, and bring back those who are far. Visit the sick and strengthen the weak. Release captives and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed that they may live in your fear and reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and all the children of your holy church. Grant them security and peace, and keep domestic and foreign conflicts far from them, so that they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and displaced of your flock, and be a refuge for strangers and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal reward to monks and to those who live on solitary lives and hermits who live on the mountaintops and in the caves of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Mary, Saint Cyril, and all the saints. May we join in their ranks and share in their joyful feast. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysus, Julius, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also those who serve your holy altar 
and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your right joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Us pardon, O God, and forgive us on the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be merciful and compassionate. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now that we may be renewed as your spiritual children so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O glorious Father, and lover of all people, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body, and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice, and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, 
Be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One holy Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving love. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for the love.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. O oh God the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only begotten Son who saved us. Through him and with him glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and of your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. So two announcements. First of all, it is an absolute delight to have all of you here. I live as a hermit, so it's very nice to see human beings on occasion. The second are two practical points. You will notice that St. Joseph's is not being advertised on the Saturday religion page in the paper. 
That has nothing to do with whether we are opened or closed, as you see well. The second point is, is also understand that on Saturday evenings after the Mass that we have on Saturday night, we have a very good crew that comes through and they're sanitizing all the pews and the missiles for the Mass that when you come in on Sunday. And that will be a practice that we'll do each weekend until such time as we find a little more peace. The last thing is, may St. Cyril intercede for all of you, all of us, and smash our idols, smash our illusions, so that the great teacher can bring us more fully into the light. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.